Hi there, Michael Bovey with Consumer Recovery Network. Thanks for tuning into our YouTube channel, Debt Bites. Today I'm going to continue on with our pros and cons series, and the topic is debt consolidation. Typically, debt consolidation, for most of us, it's understood to be a loan. Oftentimes, people might consider using a balance transfer um, as a form of debt consolidation as well. What types of loans? Well, loans you might get from your bank, a personal loan or a peer-to-peer -peer loan, um, or even a home equity line of credit. Those are coming back uh, after the recession. We didn't see as many of those, uh, but they're more common. So when you're taking out a loan, you're typically going to be paying off multiple accounts. So let's get into the pros and cons of that type of debt consolidation. Okay, first off, the main purpose of consolidating your debt is to lower your interest rates. So let's assume for a moment you have five credit cards and the average interest rate is 17% and you can get a home equity loan and pay 6%. The benefit there is obvious. In the case of, a, say, a balance transfer, um, you know, some of those interest rates could be fantastic, right? You can get intro rates that are 0% or you know, relatively low, lower than 5%. And if the balance that you have available to use and, and transfer other debts onto that, is large enough, you might be able to whack out all of your other unsecured debt, say those five credit cards again. So um, that's a pretty real benefit as well. Okay, so moving on to another pro is uh, simplification, right? And it's because you only have one payment now. If you are consolidating five credit cards into one loan, just paying them all off and now you just have the one loan and only one payment to make, it's less to keep track of, it's less things to worry about you know, um, ACH payments from your bank account or keeping track of things. In other words, the simplicity is a benefit. Okay, now another pro, and it will depend on who you are and how stretched your finances are, but the um, preservation of your credit, of your credit score, or, you know, having nothing uh, happen to any of the trade lines on your credit is a huge benefit to consolidation. And let me explain. When you do alternatives to debt consolidation to manage, you know, if you're in, in a tight spot and you absolutely are doing this to get the lower interest rates, otherwise how are you going to afford your bills? Well, the alternatives like bankruptcy that hurt your credit, debt settlement obviously hurt your credit, even debt consolidation through, it's a different type of debt consolidation through a credit counseling agency, a nonprofit. Um, they actually close your accounts in that regard. It, you know, it doesn't really hurt your score or credit counseling per se but it's on your report that you're on a managed plan and it can prevent other options, other financing options, at least for a little while when you're on one of those plans. So the debt consolidation loan is probably the best way to manage that debt situation and get a better interest rate and have it preserve your credit. All right, so another benefit is a fixed payoff, right? So assume for a moment that you're doing this correctly and you're taking those five credit cards, for example, and you're combining them into one payment. And now that fixed loan is not something that revolves, right, where you can use the credit card month, pay, some, pay that month, and then use it some more the next month, and then pay it off, and the balance fluctuates, and the minimum payment fluctuates. In a traditional consolidation loan, it's going to be a fixed um, payment, and that gives you a fixed time to pay it off. So there's a, a great deal of benefit in that, in predictability and so forth. So that's also a pro. Okay, um, balance transfers I mentioned briefly and I want to mention them even more now as a pro in that there's a lot more flexibility in balance transfers because banks do compete for your business. Once you've done a couple of these consolidation types of events you know, through balance transfers though, it starts to look like you're playing musical chairs. So I'll get to more of that in the con. Very specific to balance transfers but at least in this context where you have more options, banks competing for your business, those balance transfers could be seen as a pro, depending on who you are. Okay, so on the con side, one of the biggest problems, and it depends on who you are, but for me, from my perspective of communicating with consumers for almost 20 years on problem debt, I just see this so much that it's, for me, the first thing I want to point out. And don't be this person if you can avoid it. You might already be when you're watching this video. You do the balance transfers or the consolidation loan and you don't close those other accounts and I get it, okay, but you start using those other cards, now they were paid down to zero and suddenly now you've got 
those racked up, those charges, and the minimum payments there are now again stretching your budget thin, and you don't have that flexibility anymore in your budget because you have one consolidation loan that you're paying the minimum payment on every month, and now you've got the credit card bills on top of it, so it's compounded. Your earlier effort to consolidate your bills, needing to do it again and not having a lot of options, okay? So be very careful on that con. I see it a lot more with balance transfers of old and you know jumping from one card to the next. So let me get to that right now. Balance transfers are usually at an intro rate, okay? So it's not like you get this consolidation balance transfer loan type of product and it stays at that low, low interest, you know, teaser interest rate for the lifetime of the balance. Usually it's like a year, okay? So you transfer all your balances over there and everything's affordable because it was an intro rate. It was 0%, it was 4%, 2.9%, and then in the 13th month, it goes up to 11% or 9.8% or something like that. And suddenly now that's not within your budget. I've seen it happen even worse, higher interest rates that they revert to. So, or you miss a payment accidentally and now the intro rate's gone, right? So these balance transfer changes or these intro rates are only temporary. The person who has a consistent income, very fixed, and you know is, is able to do and afford their bills, doing a balance transfer, and then at their Christmas bonus that they know they get every year, or um, they you know get their tax refund and you know they pay that stuff down, fine, okay. But if your income is not consistent, if your spending is not consistent, if you have unexpected expenses come up and you start using those cards again, you know those balance transfers are usually a stopgap type of measure at a, at a, in, at a um, critical point where you change your behavior as well. So these debt consolidation things are a great tool along with some um, tighter budgeting often enough and or some behavior changes and some spending changes. Okay, Be careful of the balance transfer boogie. In fact, I have a post up about it. Okay, another con for consolidation loans and balance transfers and whatnot is you have to apply for these things, these other accounts, and you have to get approved. So if you're already stretched to a place where you know, your interest rates are unaffordable, it could very well mean that your debt to income ratio, uh, your credit utilization on some of your accounts that you're trying to you know, consolidate are so high that you won't qualify. Um, so that's an impediment to being able to consolidate in the first place. So be careful. Okay, so pretty simple list for consolidation loans and balance transfers. Thanks for tuning into our YouTube channel. I'll see you on the next video.